Hello! Today I want to talk about the holy grail of GPS operation. Taking questionable shots under extremely high canopy in really bad GNSS conditions. I have recently found out that SurfCE has a very effective GNSS analysis tool built into it. And it automatically does this process in addition, if you use the built-in function, you can observe a point easily multiple times with intervene point observations. So you can look at point number one, store point number two, store point number three, go back to one, go back to two, go back to three, doing ten occupations of each point, if they're nearby each other. And then you can come back to your office micromanage the GNSS analysis and because this method utilizes the ECEF vectors and the variance and covariance between the rover and the base and because it automatically throws out bad fixes this procedure has been in surf CE since at least version 3 in 2013 so it's not new it's just new to me before we head out to take some measurements we need to make couple of settings in our data collector and I just wanted to show you that in the version 6 Surf CE user manual on page 413 there's a very detailed description of this function. Well, let's make a couple of settings here inside the office. The first thing we want to do is go to the hard hat in the upper left corner and click on advanced settings and then click on the third item, GPS Point Averaging. We're going to do Genesis Analysis. So you see you can do this from the coordinates, from the raw file, or from Genesis Analysis. We're going to use Genesis Analysis. We're going to do it when the IDs match, and we're going to use the 2017 method. I'll click the green check mark here. Go back, we're going to go to File, Job Settings, and then Options. And we want to make sure that timestamp each point is checked, store GPS accuracy in raw file is checked, and store GPS vectors in raw file is checked. The other thing that we want to do is go to Equipment and then Configure. We want to check this third line, Prompt for Height and Description. So those are the changes. Let's head out in front of the office and we'll collect a point under a tree. Connect to this head. Let me check the level on this head. We're going to go to survey, store points, and we'll store point number one. I'm going to take a five second average and we'll store that point. I've got average same point ID checked. You'll see what this does in a second. You can also uncheck it, but you'll need to manually override a duplicate point. So we'll store the first observation of the first point. Okay, now I'm going to take the receiver and I'm going to dump the receiver. And we'll wait for it to fix again. Okay, we're going to store another observation of point number one. Looks great. Remember, I've got average same point ID checked, and this is a duplicate point. Um, this menu comes up. I'm going to uncheck antenna freehand. And we'll click on the green check mark. We'll dump the receiver again and wait for it to fix. Let's store this point. This will be the third observation of point number one. And so we start to accumulate information here. We're going to automatically check for letters in the vertical and letters in the height. It's pretty tight. We're being aware of that. Let's store this point. 
Dr. Chief, again. Wait for this. And we'll store this as a repeat observation of one. Repeat that operation. Now, I'm going to store a point over here. Obviously, this is a blunder. We're going to store this as point ID 1. Um, we're simulating a bad fix. I think if I stand out here all day long, I don't think I'll get a bad fix in this location. I'm going to store that. This is the sixth observation of point ID 1. We'll dump the receiver and wait for the seventh fix. That was good. Let's store another observation. Please, the seventh observation of point ID 1. This is the eighth observation. Number receiver again. Okay, number receiver again. Okay, so we've got 10 shots now. One of them is a simulated bad fix. Let's shoot another shot that's just slightly in air. We'll store that 10th shot. So I'm down uh, half a foot over a couple tenths and we'll store this. That's a repeat shot of number one. Okay, we have 11 observations. We'll go back in the office and we'll take a look at the results from this operation. Okay, we collected 11 points out in front of the office. Um, it went pretty well. Let's go and let's see what we got. On our point list, collected 11 points, but there's only one point. The 11 occupations with all of the average information is in the raw file. So the raw file has, if you want to go in and look and see what you did, in a raw sense, you can use the raw file. But we only have one point in our CRD file, which I actually think is the right answer because it is only one point. Let's go look at that observation. We can do that under Kogo and then point average. So let's give it a point ID. The point that we stored was point number one. When we do that, it's going to read through the raw file and look for all of the observations of point number one. You'll see they're numbered here and it's going to automatically go through those observations and you see the sixth observation here it has marked uh, it's crossed it out and uh, it's marked it as unused for horizontal and for vertical because both the horizontal and vertical were blundered so point number six is not going to be used in this analysis let's go down to point number eleven it's been marked out also, um, and point number 11, the horizontal and the vertical, has been marked off. Um, and so based on this series of nine ox observations, which were good, and that nine is up here, it has calculated a location, which is enumerated up here. When you look at this, you need to realize this is all done off of the ECEF vectors. These are meters down below. So the northern, eastern, and elevation are in metric. And then the result, because my job is in US survey feet, the result is in survey feet. Let's first store a report. Click on that, and this is a good name. Override it. 
I'm just going to process point number one. It's the only one in the job. And then let me go pull that job off the data collector and we'll take a look at it. Okay, I've got the report. Let's go up to the top and you'll see the report includes the job name, the receiver type, uh, the RTK method, the version of Surf CE that's generating it. In this case, I'm using ellipsoidal heights. It also gives you the observation period, the first and last, and you'll see down here on this column, it tells you the delay. So the second point was 57 seconds after the first point. Then it was, I waited 51 seconds, 52. This delay is important. The people who wrote this want you to occupy a point multiple times over a very long period. So morning, afternoon, next day morning, next day afternoon. I don't think that waiting that long is necessarily required. And the reason is that satellites are moving through the sky pretty quickly. And the thing that's keeping us from getting a good solution is not the satellites or their position. It's the trees or the canyon that we're standing in. So if we could move out in the open, we would need to do this because there's no chance our receiver would get a bad fix. Because the satellites are moving so quickly through the sky, I think it's reasonable to assume that a 5 or a 10 or a 20 minute um, observation period is pretty good. Um, and to that end, in this case, we're standing under a huge tree just north of a very thick trunk, and we got 9 out of 11 observations that were good, and the two that were blundered, I manually blundered by holding the receiver in the wrong location. So, after the least square adjustment, we get the maximum horizontal. Now this MDB is minimal detectable blunder. So the maximum was 1.7 centimeters. And that was at observation number one. And then for the vertical, 1.2 centimeters. And that was at observation number four. Antenna freehand is off, so the statistical analysis, if you're doing a freehand measurement, not on a tripod or a bipod, is different than if you're on a tripod. And then for each occupation, we get the northing, easting, and height in meters, the antenna height, the fixed status, and then we get the residuals from the final mean, and then we get this minimum detectable blunder for both horizontal and vertical. The number of satellites and the date and the delays. At the very end, we have the calculated point in survey feet and height, the number of observations that were used, and then statistically, I believe this is a one sigma estimate of error, in this case, in feet. So statistically, we feel that we're getting a 100th by 100th measurement on a point under a big tree next to a building. That's not bad. You've made it to the end of another extremely boring video on YouTube. If you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to leave them below. Hopefully I'll find them. You can send me an email too. If you, uh, want to see more boring videos like this one you can push the subscribe button down below or click on the little bell and you'll get a notice somehow from youtube when i make videos i don't make a lot if you have ideas for future videos please send them to me thank you again have a great day